adaptation directly of it, or continues the story, or what does it do? It's, it's, I would say it's inspired by that, uh, okay. and the, the key components being the are, are characters that come from the books and from the movie primarily. Uh, but we will tell the Bone Collector like your story over the course of the first season while doing closed ended episodes each week. So we do like a case of the week, but also the hunt for the bone collector shows based on the one trying to bring down these nemesis who cause these injuries. And there's some there's some nuances to the characters that the writers have created for our purposes, for the series purposes and some that we've kept. So you don't have to know the books, you don't have to know the characters to understand the series. Absolutely. No, not at all. In fact, I don't know if you saw any of it, but the get basically the origin story in the first 10 minutes okay. of the pilot. It tells you everything about how Lincoln ended up in, uh, in Paralyzed and how it was a result of the Bone Collector. And then you go back and the flashbacks we tell their story, how the two of them became an odd. It's not a book. Where'd you get the idea to um, do the series? Uh, I'll tell, I, I, so I worked for this company called Keshet Media, and it was one of my colleagues who works for me who about four years ago said, why isn't the Bone Collector TV show? It's literally like one of those light bulb moments. You know, it's a great idea for a detective series, right? An ongoing show. And it took us that long to secure the rights from Universal and Sony. Basically, they, they put this movie together, they co-produced the movie. Um, but it was from the minute he pitched it, it felt very obvious to us that this could be a very unique detective show that you hadn't seen before a unique relationship at the center. Being uh, the late season premiere next in January, how many uh, episodes are in the season? Ten. So the people who aren't, I'm sorry. The people who aren't familiar with this concept, what is the dramatic thrust of the show? How would you describe it? It is, um, it's, it's a little bit of a, I don't know if Cyrano is the right, uh, that, that connotes the wrong image, but what is, to me, the dramatic for us besides unique cases and all those things that we either hope to see on all the detective shows on television, it's the relationship between the Lincoln character and the Amelia character, the symbiotic relationship where either of them wouldn't be who they are without the other, and how they grow closer over the course of the first season. And the fact that Lincoln is basically apartment bound, his mind works brilliantly, but physically he's the and you know, he has this person out in the field who can be his, not only his eyes and ears, but his physical ears. But she's much more than that, so how do those two things reconcile? And then hopefully we'll tell interesting cases of the bone collectors and character who feels very unique and interesting. And it's really about those two and that relationship. What makes Russell the perfect Lincoln? You know, he's got, I was saying, someone asked this earlier as well, he's got this um, presence. You know, that a lot of leading actors have, right? You just, without saying anything, feel his presence in the movie, I do, hopefully you guys do too. And because of the character's physical limitations, the ability to um, promote and to, uh, and to express feelings and all that with very little physical movement is really incredible and really challenging. He's fantastic at it. He just, just with his eyes, I love it. The first, very the, the first episode was um, for the pilot, where he's he's got such a commanding voice. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of drawn, for me watching it, I was kind of drawn to that, even though he couldn't move. Yeah, he, you're right. That, he, was, he commanded the screen. The baritone kind of, right? Yeah. Just listen, and so listen him to interacting it. with everyone and the emotions, that, I mean, that's kind of the mark of a good actor that can yeah. pull that off. But I think that I'll, um, I'm looking forward to what those other episodes are going to be um, following this character. Um, do you think that, so you guys talked about... Um, the series following the Bone Collector storyline through the first season. Um, do you think that this type of storytelling works better in the TV series versus doing a series of films? Well, I think, you know, it's all. It's a, I think in broadcast television, still the sweet spot, if you can find it, is being able to tell close ended stories but have an ongoing mythology, right? So that people feel like they have to come back beyond just the story of the week. And that's what this felt to us like it's set up so uniquely. The movie obviously tells a great story. You could do a movie out of each of those 14 books, but we hopefully will, you know, in success, we can do 100 of those stories on a week to week basis while still kind of. Um, being true to the overall dynamic of the Lincoln relationship. So you're in. Last 
question, sorry. To your knowledge, is this the first time a character playing a quadriplegic has been the lead in a major television show? And if so, what do you think the significance of that is? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. I'd rather not speculate and be, be wrong. I mean, we've, we've seen other series with, with people who have disabilities, obviously, but I don't know specifically to be honest with you. So it's a very good question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.